good evening and good evening akansha good evening kanika sarvani okay let's begin with the class others would join in the time be so it's a short class and we'll be discussing few of the main main pointers related to unit number 9 that is diversity of life forms right so we'll be going in a very sequential manner if you look into the syllabus of unit number 9 it is majorly having those topics where you need to have a number of facts rote memorized okay so for example or uh, endangered species list or for example a list of some new species uh, found in some specific area etc etc if you ask me i would suggest you try not going into a depth of like complete depth of these topics reason being it will waste your time first second they are not very scoring because we tend to forget such concepts in the examination because these are very much uh, detail oriented i would say right so whatever topic that we are going to discuss in today's class that's more than enough and these are the things that you can keep in mind and if questions are asked and if you know it based upon your pyq uh, knowledge or based upon whatever we are discussing you can mark it in the examination otherwise it's better to skip off the questions from this segment okay first thing first in a number of questions in previous years this particular thing has been asked where you asked about the hierarchy of how do we actually classify the plants how do we actually classify not the plants specifically how do we classify the organisms okay so on the top level you have the kingdom then phylum class order family genus species this has been asked six to seven times just this segment they asked you about the order of the hierarchy and they gave you these things in a specific pattern so you had to find out the correct pattern of the same so first is kingdom phylum class order family genus and the species okay remember about this it's nothing to uh, like this is something very very easy and very very repeatedly learned during our ncert times as well in 11th and 12th as well we learn these things right so remember this hierarchical order you have kingdom phylum class order family and then genus how many of you have learned about this particular thing in your junior classes let me see how many of you can recall this segment yes all of you must have learned about this right so just keep a note of this kingdom phylum class order family genus and then species okay first thing second thing question get asked from this segment as well or before this let's do one important thing that is related to your yeah cladistics all these things let's do this particular thing first that is your evolutionary systematics right let's learn about what evolutionary systematics is everyone try to write down what do you mean by the word evolution yes what do you mean by the word evolution try defining this you all have learned like we have already completed this unit properly what is evolution write it down think try defining it yes what is evolution 10 of you are there in the class right now try defining it gradual changes in an organism with time right so evolution is the gradual changes right now what is evolutionary systematics so evolutionary systematic sarvani it does not mean speciation over time no evolution does not mean speciation over time 
we're not making a new species it's not compulsory that with evolution you have a new species getting formed wrong concept gradual process of change and development yes now understand this this is what evolution is evolutionary systematics is what evolutionary systematics is that the process or the way in which we are trying to get or trying to classify the organism based upon the changes based upon what similar characteristics or what different characteristics do they show in different different groups right how do we keep a specific organism in a specific group how do we keep them in a specific area that okay these are the four type of organisms that belong to similar species this is the one which is not belonging to this particular group this is what we do with the help of or how do we actually depict this we depict this with the help of evolutionary systematics right so evolutionary systematics or the traditional systematics or we can also call this simply systematics what is it it is a field within the biology that is focusing upon classifying and organizing the organisms or organizing the living organisms based upon the evolutionary history that they have evolutionary history in sense of at which point did they diverged from each other based upon the diverging evolution on or the convergent evolution depending upon what environmental conditions prevailed around them right so this is what we actually do in the evolutionary systematics right over here we make a number of graphs we make a number of different different type of trees like a phylogenetic tree or a cladogram so that we can represent the entire scenario in a very structured manner because giving a text format for the evolutionary relationship for the evolutionary similarities or the differences is monotonous but when it is depicted with the help of a curve when it is depicted with the help of a specified tree it becomes easier for understanding first it becomes visually more appealing for the organ for the for anyone to study third it becomes easier for the organism to understand the relationship at the at a in a one go you need not to keep on rote memorizing or keep on going through the paragraphs in one way or the other to learn about it or to get to have the knowledge about it right so first thing is what phylogeny what is phylogeny evolutionary systematics places uh, places a strong emphasis on the history history means that what was their correlation in the previous times and how did they evolve why are we doing or why are we focusing upon phylogeny phylogeny phylo plus geny phylo means evolutionary right something ancestral and geny is related to the study of the same so phylogeny in this we are trying to construct a phylogenetic tree or we are trying to construct branching diagrams that help us in determining or understanding the relationships this is often done in order to understand or in order to get a wider range between the morphological and the molecular relationships then homology what is homology so focusing upon the similar characteristics focusing upon the homologous traits which are the features that are shared by a number of organisms because of the common ancestors that they have then you have focusing upon phenetics phenetics is what in addition to looking into the evolutionary systematics we look into their phenotypy and their phenotype as well that is their overall morphological similarities that they are showcasing or we can say the range of their physical characteristics that they are showcasing right then you have ranks and taxonomy this phylogenetic systematics will also help in giving the taxonomy will also help in giving the rank to these organisms as well right so evolutionary systematics often employ hierarchical ranks to organize and categorize the organisms based upon um, to organize them in class order in family or in genus we'll be doing 
uh, we'll be focusing upon the systematics. Then type specimen. There's something called as holotype, paratype, neotype, and all these things, which like there are three to four questions. I've kept this particular segment for your question part itself. As in when we look into the question at that time, I'll give you the entire list of the various types possible. Okay. So this evolutionary is systematics also helps in finding out the type specimens that is the use of type organism what is the meaning of this particular segment type species or a type specimen means the base or the main specimen that we are taking into consideration for comparative analysis right so this is what a type specimen is we have a number of varieties of the same for example neotype paratype lectotype all these things right then you have historical context so it helps in evolutionary systematics helps us in finding out the historical concept the historical correlation between the two things which helps in finding out the evolutionary basis of the same right so what are evolutionary trees so they help in showcasing the evolution they represent evolutionary relationship among the set of organisms what is a taxon so like uh, i'll be explaining you one segment over here which is related to these monophyletic paraphyletic trees over here you see a specific word that is a taxon getting repeated understand what is it the taxon is what it is a group of one or more population of an organism or the organisms that are seen by the taxonomist as a unit that is when we keep a specific organism or more many populations of similar type of organisms in like the taxonomist the person who is actually concerned with this scenario when they keep it in the same group we call this group which is having one or more population of the organisms together kept as a unit we call it a taxon okay it is usually known for a particular name and a particular given ranking that is a taxon can be on the rank of class it can be on the rank of order it can be on the rank of genus etc etc right so this is what a taxon is all about now evolution consists of majorly two things right there are two main processes first one is anagenesis second one is cladogenesis this has been asked in csir what is anagenesis anagenesis means change in the gene frequency in the entire population okay anagenesis means that when you are making a new species without the splitting of the organism without the splitting of the group or we can say without the divergent evolution occurring it okay so when a new species gets formed without having any kind of split in the original population this is what anagenesis is cladogenesis is when you have a group and this splits apart because of which you have different type of species getting formed that is what cladogenesis is a different clade gets formed a different clade gets formed so anagenesis when you have an organism or a group of organisms that are getting converted into a complete new species without having a without having any kind of splitting so speciation without splitting cladogenesis is that when you have a new species formed because of the splitting of the original population the splitting of the original organisms organism group right this is what cladogenesis is in case of your cladogenesis you have the formation of the cladogram right now look over here when i look into a specific phylogeny when i look into a specific phylogenetic tree this is how it actually looks like understand all the pointers understand all the main characteristic features a specific phylogenetic tree has so you have species like this is how a phylogenetic tree looks like it could be of any order right it can be of any shape depending on the relationship so this is a root the base 
point at which your phylogenetic tree originates that it is given the name of root okay then the branch point at which you have the bifurcation starting we call it the first common ancestor so this particular point or this nodal point will showcase this main point will showcase your same common ancestor for species 1 species 2 and species 3 this is what a simple first level of bifurcation is like this particular point if i name this point as a so you will say that a is the common ancestor for all the three species showcased in the upper level okay then at this point when you look into a next branch coming out when you look into the next bifurcation so this new bifurcation this new split part that have come out it is given the name of a branch this is leading to the formation of a different species then from this particular point where you see another split we call let's say this particular point is known as b so we say b is a common ancestor for a species 1 and species 2 so this is the point or any interconnecting point any of the point at which the bifurcation or the splitting is happening we call it a node right so branches the split this is also a branch this is also a branch but in the second branch in this particular branch we have a node as well because there's an again there's a splitting in the entire scenario so and this complete length the length of these branches depicts time depicts the interrelationship that is if there is lesser like if the size of the branch is smaller we say that it have taken lesser time if the branch is more if the branch size is bigger we'll say or if the if the branch is longer we'll say that it has taken much more time right so from the baseline to the top with the passage of time you'll see the different different type of species coming in nature coming in existence and following the same we make a entire phylogenetic tree it's a very very simple concept you just have to like understand this scenario the main base point is known as root then you have the branch points the first branch point is the common ancestor for all then you have branch coming out of one and then a new split occurring so we call it a common ancestor for the other one so on and so forth this is a very simple diagram and the phylogenetic tree usually are very very complex if you look into any uh actual phylogenetic tree you will see they are very very like it's a lot of uh information that is showcased in a phylogenetic tree okay go through this if you have any doubt any problem you can ask otherwise we learn about the three of the taxons monophyletic paraphyletic and various other ones go through this
done let's move forward second let me start the ppt again again otherwise these things will start coming So now we have silver yarn. These are the various types, right? This is also a tree. This is also a way of depiction. This is also a way of depiction, right? So just remember that there are various, various ways. CSIR does not ask you these things, but I want you to have a very clear picture of these things in mind, right? Now, see again. This is the root node. That is the common ancestor of A, B, C taxon. Taxon A, taxon B, taxon C, right? This is a common ancestor for taxon A and B. Remember, when the two of them have a common ancestor, these are given the name of sister groups. Okay, this could be a potential question. Remember, taxon A and taxon B are sister groups to each other because they are having a common ancestor. And if I ask you, what will C be called in relation to A and B? You will say that C is an out group to A and B because C is a complete different member. Although they show, they share a common ancestor initially, but now they have a more recent common ancestor with them. With it, right? They share a much more common ancestor. That's why C will now be called as a out group to A and B, right? But if I ask you in relation of the root node, which are the sister groups? So A, B, C, all of three, the three will be the sister groups together. But if I'm asking you in relation of A and B, I'll say that C is an out group to A and B, right? Are you understanding this particular point, right? Remember this: that depending on what common ancestors are taken into consideration, we look into the out groups. We look into the sister groups accordingly. Okay? Don't get confused in this section. Then you have this thing. This has been asked in the PYQs three to four times. Understand this. So there are three types of groups that are taken into consideration. First one is a monophyletic group. Then you have a polyphyletic group, and then you have a paraphyletic group. In the recent years, also questions have been asked related to this. Understand this. A monophyletic group is the one. Mono means single, same, only one. Okay. Mono means one, right? So monophyletic group is the one in which I am taking into consideration every single member of the family. That is, I have taken the common ancestor, I have taken their immediate ancestors, and I have taken all of the taxons as well. This is what a monophyletic group is, right? Just understand this properly. When I am taking the common ancestor and all the members of the same group, I call it a monophyletic group. This is what a monophyletic group is. Polyphyletic group is that when I am taking into consideration any of the two members which are sharing a common ancestor, but in my group, common ancestors are not taken into consideration. It is only the final taxons. It is only the final members that are taken into consideration. Look into the color coordination; you will understand. Paraphyletic is that when I am looking into the most last ancestor and any of one of the group. That is, I have taken this last common ancestor. That is, A was a common ancestor to everyone. So I have taken this group, and if I want to make a paraphyletic group. So I'll take this. I'll take any of the branch and all of its member. That is what a paraphyletic group is. Remember this pictorial representation. You will never forget it. Monophyletic group, <laughs> the common ancestor and every single member. That is what a monophyletic group is. Polyphyletic group is that when you have the main members, when you have the main. Uh, any of the two final taxons any of the three final taxons taken into consideration and no one else no other common ancestor nothing else right see 
if i have taken e and g together it is a poly uh, polyphyletic group if i take h and g to get h and j together it's a polyphyletic group okay remember about this but D and E will not be considered polyphyletic because they have a common ancestor, immediate common ancestor. They will be considered an out sister group. Okay, so don't get confused with that. Paraphyletic is that when I have the least last common ancestor and any of one of the entire branch, that is what a paraphyletic group is. Very very easy. Remember this pictorial representation. You will no never forget it. Go through this, everyone. Very simple. Just check whether it's clear or not. Then I'll proceed. Monophyletic when the common ancestor I have taken the groups I have like I have taken the common ancestors I have taken their final taxons also that is what a monophyletic group is. Just understand the images you will not find a problem. It's very easy. That's the over here. Next main terms, and based on these five terms, questions have been asked in the examination. Which are the five terms? First one is syn apomorphy. Then you have ot apomorphy, homoplasy, ho apomorphy, and sim plesiomorphy. What are the meanings of each one of them? I'll show you with the help of diagram itself. Okay, syn apomorphy, ot apomorphy. It is not auto like I pronounce it ot apomorphy. I don't know why from very beginning. Then you have homoplasy. Then you have apomorphy, and then you have simplesiomorphy. Okay, this was the only dedicated topic that I did for my unit number nine. That's why I have notes of it. So just understand this. Okay, so important terms. First one is simplesiomorphy. Simplesiomorphy is the character. morphy is related to the morphology morphology related to morphological characteristic that is showcased in any of the group like this is what we study in this morphy that's why in each of them except for homoplasy you have the word morphy because we'll be looking into the characteristic shared or specific character shared by shared by a specific group of organisms syn apomorphy Then apomorphy is any characteristic in the recent common ancestor and all of its descendant is known as syn apomorphy. Look into the diagram. This is how the tree looks like, and this coloured portion depicts the character. Okay, when the character is there in your common ancestor and all of its descendants, right? So this is what syn apomorphy is. This has been asked in the examination. Remember about this. Okay. Then you have ot apomorphy. Ot apomorphy is what it is a unique and a distinctive character which was never showcased in any group, any common ancestor, any organism ever. 
this is what ot apomorphy is see in the entire group that you have in the entire in the entire uh, classification that you have you have only one of the taxon showcasing this unique distinctive feature this is what ot apomorphy is then you have homoplasy homoplasy is it is the set of the species character in the set of species that were never ancestor that never had any kind of common ancestors except for the very old generation that is homoplasy see in this organism and in this organism they are nowhere related now they have do they do not have any recent common ancestors so when these showcase any set of organism a set of characteristic we call it homoplasy right so when the characteristic is showcased in a set of species but never in their ancestors this is what homoplasy is and this homoplasy is a result or it leads to convergent evolution because when these organisms will be showcasing similar character they will be able to work in a similar manner when they start to work when they start to adapt to similar environments they start to converge together as a result they'll be showcasing convergent evolution then you have apomorphy so character which is there in the new descendants but not present even in the recent ancestor which helps in the making of a new clade a new group so apomorphy is that when you have the and uh, characteristic in the new characteristic in the new descendants in the new group of descendants that have been formed but it was not there even in their recent common ancestor this is apomorphy then you have symplesiomorphy what is symplesiomorphy so ancestral character that is shared by two or more taxons so ancestral character which is shared by like one and one two shared by one or two or more taxons we call it a sim simplesiomorphic character or simplesiomorphy okay every required information is here you need not to go into any other detail for this because if you start to go into the details of these things you will be lost for a month so try not doing it but if you want to do if any one of you who is stubborn enough go ahead and do it you have the entire google and everything for your enhancement of knowledge do it but if you want to look into csir perspective not required this is more than enough synapomorphy character in the recent common ancestor and all of its descendants ot apomorphy unique and distinctive character which was never there in the entire clade homoplasy character in a in the new set of species but it was never there in the ancestors apomorphy it was not there even in the recent ancestors but it was showcased in the new descendants then you have simplesiomorphy so character which is showcased by two or more taxons this is what all the five terminologies are for your reference i have added the similar thing in a detailed format just the definition of the same so that you can use it synapomorphy shared derived character found in two or more species and their most common recent ancestors key concept in cladistics helps in determining the evolutionary relationship then or apomorphy homoplasy apomorphy simplesiomorphy i have explained these exactly similar thing nothing new okay go through these any doubt any problem you can ask then we move forward
and as express c now in the csir based on the same try marking the answer so for this exact same question was asked and actually i took up this topic from a question okay there it is nowhere mentioned about uh, these things so i took up the topic from this question itself so i have added the question also try marking the answer for this very easy mark the answer quickly very good very good for this particular question so first one is what first one is synapomorphy as i have explained then you have homoplasy this and this and then you have what apomorphy simple basic question this was a four marker that was asked in the examination okay remember about this next is the principle of parsimony very simple question again very simple concept again i have already explained this particular thing in one of the questions that we did in the previous year attempt right so principle of parsimony says use the fewest steps possible the least number of steps should be taken into consideration for giving you the accurate results because when the number of steps increase complexity of the concept increases okay so principle of parsimony or the law of parsimony it's a problem solving principle that share, that says that you should not complete like you should not make a topic make any uh, process complex just by adding many many steps to it okay entity should not be multiplied without necessity or just be simple and do the work it's like pr principle of parsimony is like me okay i consider myself i apply this particular thing to my own day to day life as well need not to like make anything com make anything complex just relax your mind and do the simplest thing possible try to like many students uh, think about that csir can only be qualified if you keep on rote memorizing the entire standard books they keep on com making their entire preparation complex but you should not make it like you should not go ahead and think about the complexities you should try to simplify it down in the least number of steps possible so that you can work smartly and then you can get a much better accurate results okay so apply your principle of parsimony to your complete preparation okay so this is the entire thing i've just added this over here but i want you to just remember this thing and based on this i want you to solve out this question just remember principle of parsimony says what it says that use the least number of steps possible okay and because you all have already done a topic a question related to principle of parsimony i am giving you this question as a task so apply your knowledge for the same and mark the answer for this okay take your time mark the answer for this particular question everyone i'll give you 2 minutes understand the question read the question and then mark the answer let's see how many of you can mark it
that is simple look over here want to classify three taxa you have taxa a b and c you have the information given over here that there are three of the characteristics p is having a and b character q is having a and b r is having b and c that means b is the characteristic which is there with each of them that is all three of them is having the b characteristic okay right now let's understand about it sorry there are three taxons all three of them have p p q and r all of them have b characteristic all okay now based upon the trait distribution and the principle of parsimony select the correct option look into the first one a and b taxons a and b is having p both of them is having like a is having p also q also so p also q also is there b is having r as well that is this one okay in addition to that p and q as well then there's an additional r on the c side as well but this is a complete like 1 2 and 4 four of the steps over here 1 2 3 4 five five steps over here 1 2 3 and 4 four steps that means what that means b gets eliminated at like at the first go itself reason being there are more number of steps over there so i can eliminate a option i can eliminate b option the answer is either c or a only like either only this cladogram is possible or this cladogram is possible let's see that in the first scenario in your or let's look into the c first in the third scenario they have added the q like the p being on two of them and they have added r on the separate one but they have not given the r characteristic on the b taxon that means what that means it is technically not possible because they have not given the complete information on the entire cladogram right they have missed out some information so this is a wrong cladogram i would say i can eliminate c option as well and with this i reach to the correct answer that a cladogram is the only one which is possible right did you understand the question very simple very very easy question any doubt any problem understood everyone one more time okay it's a very simple question let me take this segment on the next one so that i can enlarge it okay see over here first calculate the number of steps in all of them over here you have four 1 2 3 and 4 over here you have 5 over here you have 4 okay first thing yes i am repeating it again this cladogram gets eliminated in the first go because principle of parsimony says least number of steps right principle of parsimony says least number of steps first thing so b gets eliminated so with this i can eliminate a and b and b option right because b cladogram is for sure not possible then look into the c cladogram see in the c cladogram if you observe carefully they have not provided the complete information reason being b b taxon have p q and r all three of them right but they have not depicted r characteristic on the b taxon they have not like they have missed it that means it is not showcasing correct information that means what that means this info this one is an incorrect statement this complete cladogram gets wrong because r characteristic is there with b as well like b is having all the three characteristics p q and r so that means what that means this is incorrect 
it has not shown the complete information over here that's why i can eliminate c as well and with this i can reach to my correct answer as option number a that is a is the only cladogram possible because a and b is having p and q shown b is having r as well they have depicted it and c is having only r so they have used least number of steps to showcase the like all of the information possible right understood everyone yes now is it clear anjali and neha any doubt right neha clear this is about the principle of parsimony okay now see i have added this entire information for you you can just go through it after the class there is nothing different written just for your additional information i have added it so that you can just read it afterwards okay so principle of parsimony is also called as parsimony analysis and it is also known as ockram's razor okay it is also known as ockram's razor remember these two things because it might be asked in any of the match the following thing next thing related to the cladogram i have explained you what a cladogram is over here there is definition of all the things right like for example what is an out group what is a clade what is monophyletic group what is a branching system structure so all these things together these structures in total the branch points splitting together represents the various things what i have explained you i've just added on the text format for the same okay then node taxa character and character states so all the features that we have they are <laughs> these are known as the characters okay then you have parsimony analysis that is cladogram is constructed by applying the principle of parsimony same thing written down then you have the branch length so what i have explained you the same thing that is branch length indicate the number of character state changes or the steps required to move from one node to the other one more the branch length is there that means there is more of the character differences between the old generation and the new one okay this is about a cladogram then you have like same thing related to the phylogenetic tree branches nodes taxon root character state clad all these things you can go through it afterwards nothing new written monophyletic paraphyletic polyphyletic groups and remaining are similar things homoplasty and all these things i have explained see over here root common ancestor common ancestor of a and b etc etc just for your detailed analysis i have added this then already discussed yeah now we have one more term that is your conservation strategies that is what are the various strategies that we have that could help and uh, that could be used to conserve the organisms that could be used to protect and preserve the natural habitat natural environment of the organisms okay so what are these these are the approaches plans actions that are aimed at protecting and preserving the natural environment wildlife and the biodiversity the strategies are essential for making sure that there is less of loss of biodiversity the ecosystem gets safeguarded ensuring sustainable use of natural resources etc etc first is protective areas and reserve formation habitat restoration sustainable resource development biodiversity monitoring legislation and policies that is enforcing laws for conserving the area community engagement that is the people living in the surrounding area of the wildlife and everything they should be engaged actively education should be provided climate change mitigation reduction in the greenhouse gases should be there endangered species protection should be there international collaborations technology innovations economic incentives etc etc this is basic thing like you can just read it once and there are many many other things that you can add on which can be like making sure that the locals are participating making sure that the government is enforcing the laws the laws are even after getting like implemented they need to be keep a kept a check check upon that whether they are 
put into practice or not etc etc okay so this is about one more thing which you can keep a note of related to conservation strategies then you have a number of parasites that can impact the humans see there are a number of them no matter how many you read them even then some diseases would be left so i've tried to add few of them for you that is protozoans in this you have malaria parasite caused by responsible for which all things transmitted by which particular mosquito then you have the other one then you have helminths ortrichoids ectoparasites internal parasites blood parasites worms in the eyes so all these things this is something which i got from one of the site so i have added it there are so many other ones okay you need not to rote memorize all of them because it's technically not possible okay you cannot waste your time in something which is very unpredictable you might get some completely out of the box disease right in the recent time in 2022 there was a question asked related to elephantiasis in the two year like in morning and evening shift they asked about elephantiasis then they might ask about any other thing as well so try doing the best possible like you can go through all of these things make a list of it in addition do not uh, skip the pyqs and that's enough for you to like target out the questions okay so this is one more thing last thing is there was a question asked related to adaptive radiation as well let's understand about what adaptive radiation is a single species rapidly adapts to fill available niches in the environment this is what adaptive radiation is what is the meaning of this so adaptive radiation is that when you have a common ancestor and this common ancestor starts to diverge in such a way that all the possible characteristics that were there that all the possible conditions that are prevailing in the environment are like used up by the organism that is a single species is trying to adapt to fill in all the possible areas to fill in all the possible niches in the environment this is what adaptive radiation is there was a question asked so i added it okay so what is it it's a process in the evolutionary biology in which a single ancestral species diversifies into multiple species to exploit different different ecological niches okay this phenomenon typically occurs when the population of organisms encounter a variety of new and unoccupied environment that is when organisms are there and they look into various new different type of conditions prevailing and they try to adapt to it which leads to the evolution into various various different adaptation based on different different niches right now you have the various characteristics of the adaptive radiation first one is rapid speciation that is within a span of lesser time new species evolve and diverge diverse niches that is a number of different different unexploited unutilized niches get used up for colonization for food resources etc divergent evolution obviously the common ancestor is there and they are trying to adapt to various different types so divergent evolution is occurring then it often occurs mainly on the islands where you see isolated populations being there then you have examples so you have various examples of the same most common example is darwin finches because uh they diversified into different different beak shapes based upon the type of the conditions that were prevailing based upon the type of the food that they were able to take up based on that they showcase adaptive radiation except for that there are various other examples you can just go through this is a very simple topic of adaptive radiation you can remember this go through this and if you find any difficulty you can ask very very simple topic
right so these are the if you have to keep in mind in addition there was one more thing in the initial yeah see over here there are few methods few key quantitative methods that are used in plant taxonomy one is numerical taxonomy that is phenetics which is collection of the quantitative data for the morphological and the physiological characteristic that the plant is showcasing based on that the organisms the quantitatively like we are trying to quantitatively get to know about the different different types of plants that are there then you have genetic and molecular methods so based upon dna barcoding based upon the dna sequencing etc etc so we are trying to get the information based on that then you have ecological niche modeling so it is used to predict the geographic distribution of the plant species based on the environmental variables it helps in keeping in identification of potential distribution that over here these type of plants could be found and finding out what impact a specific climate change might have on the distribution of the organism then you have numerical descriptors descriptors that is measurement of the leaf size flower morphology seed characteristic etc etc then you have phylogenetic methods statistical analysis based upon the herbarium data then you have machine learning and artificial intelligence as well write down what is herbarium fd1 and how many of you made the made a herbarium during your school timing yes what is herbarium any idea what is it yes it plants in their same morphological characteristics yes on a herbarium sheet we take a white sheet of paper initially or a like uh, during our uh, school time uh, we were asked to write keep it in a sheet of newspapers and then to keep it under the matrix ba bed matrix for 3 to 4 days or maybe more than that till the time the complete a uh, plant loses its moisture and then we had to paste it on a herbarium sheet right so this is about it right and now with this technically we are done with the entire syllabus okay technically we are done with the entire syllabus of csir uh, we projected 15th october initially that by 15th of october we'll be getting done with the entire course but Uh, i managed i don't know how it got done but uh, 15 days before on 30th of september we are completing off with the entire syllabus of the csir and now you have in total two and a half months for your preparation revision recalling practicing and everything okay you have two and a half months in your hand utilize this particular time in the best manner possible okay do not try to like think about that uh, now while sit and start with this new topic or this new thing not required whatever you have in your hand use that if you are able to keep these things also in mind you will be able to qualify very easily and that to with a very very good rank okay so try to utilize your time in the best possible way tomorrow we will be having two classes or if not two at least one for pyq okay and tomorrow we will be doing the questions of 2023 the remaining questions of your evening shift okay the new numerical questions and all those new type of questions that i uh, skipped for the in the initial time so we'll be doing all those questions i have solved all of them today in the for the whole work so work so work so tomorrow make sure that you are coming to the class and make sure that you are like just learning all those things because they are all very interesting questions and we are going to discuss a very like a number of new concepts in the question series okay because in the during the pyq also you learn various new new small small things so 
make sure that you come in the PYQ course every single day, right? And we'll be starting with the plant physiology revision now, okay? We are starting off for the full course students. This is the second cycle of revision. For the crash course students, it is the uh, next cycle of revision. That is the first cycle of revision. And for the new student, that is for the PYQ batch students, this is your revision starting off with in a very structured manner. Okay. So all the three batches will go, will go in hand in hand. You'll be having weekly tests. You'll be having every Sunday, you'll be having the test. Make sure that you're giving the test right on time. Every day, you'll be having two classes from Monday. Like, uh, in the weekdays, you'll be having two classes, Monday to Saturday. Early morning, 8.30, evening, 6 o'clock. Timings are fixed. If there's any change, you'll get to know. Otherwise, every single day, early morning, 8.30 and evening, 6 o'clock is the fixed timing of the classes. Right? So... Tomorrow is a new month starting. Make sure that you are making a good plan for yourself for the entire month and you are doing the work in the similar pattern. Okay. Anything anyone wants to ask or discuss, you can. Otherwise, from my end, we are done with the entire class. We are done with the class today. If you want to ask anything, you can. Otherwise, we are done. We'll be discussing the further things in the next class. Be there on YouTube as well at 8 o'clock. We'll discuss few questions there also. Yes, anything, anyone? Okay, so this is about it. Thank you for coming in this class. Thank you for <coughs> joining in. Let's meet in the next class. Be there in the class on YouTube at 8 o'clock. No, it's not important. If like, uh, try to limit your knowledge. Okay, try to keep every single thing in. Whatever you have, keep that thing and try to have those things revised again and again. Okay. And also, sweetie, you were there in the very first class also and today also. It's good to see that students are coming regularly. Few students are there who have joined the batch on the very first day. Sweetie, I guess you joined the full course on the very first day of launch, if I'm not wrong. And it's good to see that you're still coming to the live classes. Very good, very good. Okay, so, so good to see so many students coming on regular basis. Like Kanika joined on the third or fourth day of the launch of the batch. Very good. Study properly, qualify the examination and do well in life. Okay, bye everyone. Take care. All the best.